Alrighty, today we're doing part two of the internal spline cutter or the horizontal shaper, the brocher, whatever you want to call this thing. I'm going to keep calling it the internal spline cutter because that is mainly what I'm building this for. Today we're going to be building the part that mounts onto here that moves the cutter up and down. That's what all these pieces are going to be. Um, I already cut them out. I didn't film any of that. I'm not going to show every single thing like I normally do. I, I try not to do it with... Uh, my recent videos, I know sometimes I kind of show every single process of every single thing and it gets a little boring, gets a little repetitive. And I'm not, I'm going to try and not do that in these videos just because, um, with like process of like cleaning all these plates up, it's just, you know, fly cutting, it gets a little boring, gets a little repetitive pretty fast. So I'm going to clean all this stuff up and then show you the process of how I'm going to take all these pieces and build the part for this machine. So anyway, let's uh let's get started.
All right, so we got it up to this point. Now, this is actually my very first time cutting a dovetail. I think I did a pretty good job. It slides up and down pretty smoothly. It does bind up a little bit on the bottom, but I can get rid of that with just some files. It does have a little bit of play, but if I tighten uh, these set screws up in the back that you can't really see, it gets rid of uh, most of that play. Most of the uh, force of cutting something is just gonna be uh, pushing this thing this way. It's not really gonna be a side load or it's not really gonna be twisting anything. So it really doesn't have to be that perfect. I still need to obviously finish this. I need to add a bushing in the middle and then add washers to each side. So therefore I can uh, turn this rod, Acme rod, and this will move it up and down. We also need to add a handle to the top. That's all going to be in the next video. So I think the next video is going to be um, building the table to mount all this stuff to. I'm really curious to figure out, will that linear actuator that I bought for this machine, will it be strong enough to move it back and forth and will it be strong enough to actually cut material? If it's not strong enough, I can always buy a stronger one, but if that ends up uh, not working as well, I do have a backup plan on how to build this without using linear actuators just in case they end up not working. So, but uh, anyway, I gotta end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.